coming up in this week's episode. Yeah, I've got a fat bitch at home. <laughs> and she's absolutely useless. She's a rescue dog. No, no, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you imagine drink working? Yeah. I mean, my father-in-law, he would say that in their lunch break, they'd go and have a couple of pints. Mm. And they're working still workers. Going down into the furnaces. Yeah. You know, have a couple of pints, go back, you know, manage the goods train, go loading up all the, 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 the slag, you know, not her. But, you know, men were men then, Andy. The number of families sitting down having their full English with a pint. With a pint, yeah. Half past three in the morning. Yeah. You were stopped from flying that time, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> because they said you aren't even a qualified pilot. Why are you doing it, Andy? Get out of the cockpit. It's time to adjust those shoulder pads, back comb what's left of your hair, and jump into the DeLorean for a look back at what's possibly the best decade anyone could ever have grown up in. Shall we play a game? This is Bring Back the 80s with your hosts, James Alderson and me, Andy Jackson. Tuesday the 19th of November. No. Nearly Christmas. What? James is two pints in there. Hey. <laughs> well, you know what the 80s phrase was? Five and drive. Five and uh, drive, yes. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and people uh, people drunk and drunk drove all the time. All the time. But it wasn't even a, mate, don't drive like that. It was just get home because everybody was local to the pub. But yeah. they went half a mile down the road, bounced off a few lampposts and got home. And you could say without irony, I actually drive better when I fed a drink. <laughs> but so many people said that. Well, how are they well, going to get home otherwise? Drive home, yeah. Yeah, there was no no other way. No other <laughs> means. Good walk, no. maybe. <laughs> That's just reminded me, actually, of a day back in the 80s mm. when I had, um, uh, back in the dim distance past, before the before the divorces and before the kids, <laughs> I actually had a ride on lawnmower. Yeah. And it was Christmas time. And I thought, well, we're all too pissed to try to <laughs> pop a drove on the lawnmower. <laughs> on the lawnmower to the pub. That's a bloody great idea. Because now, of course, we're all yeah. looking after our local communities and virgin ourselves. Yes. I yes. think it should be encouraged. Scary thing is though when i got back the next morning there was damage to the lawnmower oh and no. it was like did you sue the pub it was like <laughs> i don't know what i hit on the way back oh shit obviously i'm not uh you know i was not Someone's something dog. i'm not something i'm proud of <laughs> did some, <laughs> someone's yorkshire terry out of a short back inside <laughs> it's like whoops oh, sorry oh my Deirdre. god but yes it was not a big uh, you know it was not a big deal obviously <laughs> now you know we know not to do that don't, well i think don't that, drink a drive kids no don't but it's, I think there's a litter pickings happening all over the community, mm. right? No, no disrespect, but it's mostly mums and kids doing all the litter picking. And I think the dads really need to step up. So what we need to do is start getting our lawnmowers <laughs> down the pub, <laughs> have a few pints, and then mow our way home. Mow our way home. Mow, ho Look mow, ho that. mow homes. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, but um, it, we should definitely do our part of the community and help with the verges and people's front lawns if you yes. go a bit astray. Yeah. Um, and uh, just start mowing and driving, uh, drinking. Drink a moat. There was a, you, know, you say there was no way to get back from home. I don't know whether it's still a thing, mm -hmm. but there was, for a time, oh, no. pubs had their own <laughs> mini buses. Did they? And they would, we threw out in the country, yeah. where I was, for a time I lived out near Somerset yeah. for a while, and uh, there would be the the bus that would come and pick you up, yeah. take you to the pub, yeah. and then obviously you're, you're stuck at the pub yeah. until it's time to go home. Whether the person who was driving the mini bus yeah. was actually drinking or not, no. <laughs> Who knows? So I don't know. Uh, is this when you lived at that special home? That special home. <laughs> the minibus would come and go and do what would take you back. <laughs> come on, Andy. It's time to go back, mate. Leave the windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buses, uh, buses to the pub. Because if you didn't have a minibus in your pub, yeah. they say the only alternative was to... Uh, that could be a way forward. Because a lot yeah. of pubs are shutting down now. Yeah. I reckon there's about 80% of pubs since the 80s have closed. So now the remaining ones start minibuses. Well, how about, this. how about this for an idea? Let's take it one stage further. Let's have a double decker bus that just drives round the house. You just get on. It just goes round in a circle. Get on, get off, and a mobile, a mobile pub, Jake. That sounds like a bloody great a idea. Mobile pub. You heard it here first, kids. Yeah. If you see anyone else starting it, let us know because we've now trademark <laughs> copyrighted that oh, just by broadcasting this. It's it. This is this. Andy belongs to us. Andy's double mobile decker pub piss up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like double deckers? I, I love a and double decker. And now we decker. know why. Yes, <laughs> double decker. Boo. 
booze, double decker, chocolate. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. No, great idea. So anyway, welcome along to our new edition. We're oh, yeah. back on the, <laughs> as you can see, back in the pub again. Yeah. James is there. Uh, you're still, still standing, James. I'm glad you're loving it. Wonderful stuff. I reckon we should move the whole podcast to the pub. Just did the podcast. <laughs> what a time I've picked to yeah. stop drinking. Yeah, bit of an idiot. What a time <laughs> I've picked, but there we go. But it does mean that I've got your point. Yes. As- there we go. Look at that. Cheers, Andy. Thank yes. you, mate. See if I can drink it without getting at me. <laughs> not, a cha- not a chance, James. Not a Look chance. Look at that. But it's, isn't it strange? You know, men were burlier and more masculine in the 80s, mm. for better or for worse. And I now know why. Because the size of the bloody tankards. <laughs> it's just such a heavy bastard to lift, let alone having to bite the liquid in it. Workout when you massive, that, yeah. solid glass thing um, or a metal thing. Some Metal of the guys tankers. would have them hanging in front of them. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to put that down because it's too heavy. My, my forearms aren't strong enough anymore. Um, sometimes you walk up to the bar and you could barely see the people behind the bar because hanging above was the tankards. And obviously you'd have like dishcloths and pictures of dogs. And then you'd have beer mats and you'd have the pumps and you'd have everything hanging and some bloody coarse brasses. And you could barely see who's serving you behind the great big pumps there. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, massive. These metal tankers that the regulars would have. Yeah. They wouldn't want that. Don't give me that one. That's mine. Need to unhook his. Is that still a thing where you can go to a pub? As you say, I reckon in country pubs, they have their drink, thing, their, yeah. their yeah. glasses hanging or their metal tankards hanging yeah. up there. Not now. Imagine going to Weatherspoons going, ah, oh, that's not my glass, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Some 18 year old going, you're a dickhead, mate. Um, so can, I just, can I just say, by the way, mm-hmm. going into Weatherspoons mm-hmm. is in a way like going back to the 80s because the prices are very similar yeah and you stick to the carpet like very, you in the 80s very yeah. similar I went to um, Fairham Fairham Live and of course there's a Weatherspoons almost opposite I was there. Fairham Live okay. yes just by the other mm. side mm. other side of the shopping centre and I cannot I can't think of anywhere else in the whole country mm. where you can go you can have drinks and two two meals two drinks mm. and it's only 20 quid <laughs> is this what put you off drink <laughs> <laughs> is this why you stopped drinking when it's all Weatherspoons <laughs> yeah. had a couple of Five for a quid each. <laughs> now you feel very ill. <laughs> yeah, Weather Spoons is a, bit, a weird one. It's a blast from the past, but it and it, it mostly men again. Yes, you go to Weather yeah. Spoons. It is like the final resting place of men where they can go and hide. It's like a men's shed without any creativity or work at all. <laughs> Just go in and drink. It's like you, if you want to, if you fancy a pint at half past eight in the morning. Yeah, Weather Spoons. Good luck to you. It's your place. And part of the whole drinking culture in this country, which I love, mm. is like, I think I might have mentioned this. The, the well, which. I used to love. I used to love. Not <laughs> today. Love. I, when, I was at, when I was at Gatwick Airport the other day for an early, early flight, mm. um, like half past three in the morning flight, yeah, yeah. the number of families sitting down having their full English with a pint. With a pint, yeah. Half past three in the morning. Yeah. It's kids for you, mate, isn't it? Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do get pissed, did you? <laughs> obviously. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Back then, obviously now. Not now. Jake is just, well, now, just about I mean, stopping now. You were stopped from flying that time, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> because they said, you aren't even a qualified pilot. Why are you doing that, Andy? Get out of the cockpit. <laughs> so last Sunday, I had a weather spoon at gate four. <laughs> Get him out of that Boeing. Uh, I'll be fine. Five and dry. <laughs> There's a question. Time for the five left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, I did. Now, I've got a little collection here. Yes. Because one thing that's definitely missing from most pub tables, because they've got to leave room for the cutlery and the candle, is um, beer mats. All right. Yes. Um, so what I've got for you there is I've got a nice Schweppes Natural Goodness Juices. Okay. That's the famous one. Uh, <laughs> um, here, shh, can you keep a secret? You could win one of six new Ford Escort Cabriolet 1.6 Is. Oh, okay. something to be coveted. Yeah. That's a very sexy car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very. Um, quick jump, it's last orders. Tavern time. Courage. Do you remember Courage? Courage, yes. Wow. Uh, probably the best lager in the world, Carlsberg. With a look, with a massive tankard, glass tankard there. Heavy uh, Worthington, we mentioned that. Own up. Who put Barry Manilow on the jukebox? That's the, that's the, <laughs> that's the coaster there. <laughs> well, Australians wouldn't give a Castlemaine Forex for anything else. Do you remember that slogan? Yeah. When the Australians yeah. bought their lagers over here, we were very excited. Weren't very we? excited. Fosters then, and Castlemaine. Yeah. And then we found out, was it Foster's that none of the, none of the Australians would touch? They won't drink it. They won't, no, they won't touch no. it. Obviously, John Player Special. You want to advertise your fags when you're in the pub? These were also uh, Formula One 
uh, yes. racing cars. All, all of them. Yeah. It's a manly thing to yeah. do. Have a fag. Race cars. Get pissed. Um, are you a scholar? <laughs> Skull? Look, Skull. with our glasses on. Yes. Oh, together. that's brilliant. Oh. Um, Britain's biggest selling lager is now Britain's biggest sponsor. Carling Black Label, Carling Premiership. Late yeah. 80s oh, coaster God, there. Yeah. Do you remember? The Carling Premiership. Yes. And then obviously, the most masculine fag ever mixture of terms um, <laughs> is uh, Marlboro now here you could actually win a turbocharged Mustang gear which is America's best love sports car and you've got to sign <laughs> you've got to sign this to say I am a smoker over 18 years of age <laughs> and name the pub now what I love about that and that is 1981 is that you've got to sign to say you're a smoker over 18 years of age because in the 80s every bastard over the age of six was smoking fag oh my god yeah <laughs> you go down the park and there's some toddler having a fag uh, just go down the slide it's funny because I, I've now noticed that when I started smoking sadly at you know 13, 14 because yeah, it was yeah. a cool thing to do now you see kids of that age vaping and they're taking yeah. the vapes into school yeah. uh, doing exactly what we did with cigarettes back in the day and smoking cigarettes has just replaced yeah. been replaced by, by vaping but at least these days the kids as bad as vapes are are enjoying the flavour of raspberry and lemonade <laughs> yeah. right? you were enjoying the flavour of tarmac yes. and something else I don't know what it was be like oh this is so lovely you weren't you were watching old films of James Dean and some cool dude on telly thinking it was cool these days, I don't know who they're emulating because they're not allowed cigarettes and vapes on telly. So they're just going down the park and having a suck on a one-time raspberry-flavoured... I don't know what it is. Uh, and sucking chemicals through their vapes. They've done the same thing with vapes that they did with Alcopops, when Alcopops could, because, you know, like you say, the, the, the image of drinking was... Uh, it was a thing that old men did. Yeah. So then they made them taste like, you know, pop yes. to get the kids hooked. And I think it's exactly the same as happening now with the, with the vapes. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'd never vaped. I've never smoked. Uh, until this episode, never drunk. <laughs> you look, it's something about you makes you look instantly wiser, James, if you got a pint in your hand. I'll tell you what, that is my secret. I walk around with a tankard full of skull on it, full of lager, through the shops, and everyone asks my opinion on things oh, all the time, and I give it to them. I tell you, I tell them my opinion. Don't you worry. Oh, dear. Shall we have a reminder of the mystery sounds Absolutely. this i know got you very very excited yes uh, we will announce the winner next time round. if you know what this is we'd still love to know where is it paul first star down the corridor Dot paul. one paul ah! sorry i didn't realize <laughs> sorry the fine to tell is, please, Bob. Where were you? Where was I? Where were you? Where I told you. First room no, no, around no, the corner. No, no. I went down there. I opened the door. And <laughs> you heard. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> exactly. You've got to hand it to him. Mystery sound coming up in a moment. Is that, is that not the mystery sound? That's not the mystery oh, sound. Okay, screaming girls in a pub. <laughs> We've all heard that. Yeah. Oh, dear. There was always something random like that, wasn't there, that they put in? It, like, obviously, got the break dancing, dancing dogs. Something odd would always happen in a pub advert. And uh, yeah, obviously, a sauna, very relevant. Well, the thing is as well, it was I don't quite understand where the, like, how, why were there naked people in changing rooms in the pub in there? I <laughs> don't, I don't know. You have saunas in every pub. Don't you remember, <laughs> Andy? What's wrong with you, mate? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just trying yeah. to find some sort of humorous edge to embarrass the guy. Mm. That must have been late 80s when he started embarrassing men because you did, it wouldn't have done that in the early 80s no. with the Worthington's advert. He's a legend for going in a pub, not embarrassed. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, and isn't it funny that the way that I remember the transition, cause I started going into pubs very, uh, probably 1991 maybe. And I remember even I saw the transition of men's expectation of what a pint looks like because every advert they wanted head on the beer on the bitter has to about an inch of that um, and still up north they want it but it used to be that in a lager they wanted that as well but now if you give them an inch or an inch and a oh, half of head they're like yeah. oh, do you want to fill that up mate <laughs> do you want to top that up to the top because they leave it to settle and it goes down it's yeah, three quarters yeah, of a yeah. pint they're kicking yeah. off yeah. it's just because of the cost of a pint of course you, <laughs> back then it was an 80p a pint mm. now it's a seven quid and you look at a pint and the inch and a half it's costing you a quid yeah it's not like the thing is that, like, so, yeah, the thing is you got your pint like that you say oh can you just stick 
stick a stick a little top in there. Yeah, and they just go to there and say, actually, no, stick yeah. some more beer in. Yeah, there. please, yeah. if you don't mind. <laughs> it's got, I can't afford air because <laughs> that's what effectively that last inch of the bit is. It is nice to have a soft top, isn't it? Um, you just not want a little bit. Yeah. You just want a little bit. But in the, it's in most other European countries. They give you, a, you know, they scrape the top off with a knife, don't they? Yeah, the foam away. They're very That's fancy. That's what makes you gassy, yeah. apparently. And then they wipe it on their um, tea <laughs> towel. <laughs> tea towel they got over the shoulder. Well, that's why everyone loves cappuccinos, of course. They don't want the espressos and the flat whites. They want something frothy top. It's <laughs> soft on the lips, especially when you're delicate as we are, Andy. You want a soft head. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> hold, hold that thought. If you dare. Why? What's that? <laughs> can, you, can you imagine going to, into a pub in the eighties no. and saying, "I'll have a cappuccino, please." Oh God! Well, they, you didn't get you didn't get hot drinks. No. When did being able to order coffee in a pub become a thing? It's a, it was just not something that would ever be even considered. I mean, you wouldn't. It? Soft drinks, not really. No, not even a lady would get a soft drink. She'd have a gin and tonic. Or a something and whatever. But Maybe it was sham. never, yeah, but it was never a, I'll have a Diet Coke or I'll have a lemonade. You go in and you're getting alcoholic stuff. Mm. That's it. And you're going in to get drunk probably as well. Just numb the pain of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's nothing on telly. We've got three channels. Please give me something to live for. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, these days people are quite happy. I, I mean, God love them for it. You know, you're the designated driver. You want a soft drink. You don't drink, Andy. Obviously, if there's something wrong with you. Um, <laughs> and, but yeah, you have a coffee and a cappuccino and yeah. a hot chocolate and a tea. Can you imagine the reaction of uh, somebody in the 1980s going up to the bar and saying, "What alcohol-free beers do you have?" Yeah. Please? Oh God, yeah. That yeah. Would just be. I, mean, I don't know when alcohol free beers became a thing obviously at the moment while i'm on my little break i'm quite Found enjoying of them. an alcohol free um, yeah. beer and yeah. they're not as disgusting no. as they used to be they're actually pretty close to the to the real thing but yeah. when did having alcohol free beer mm. When did that come in? I think it was when we got a lot more TV channels and we got a lot more excited at home and realised, why don't we just get boring at the pub? Let's be boring somewhere. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, if you went into a pub in the 80s and we can have some alcohol-free beer, they'd go, oh, I could give you a glass of water if you want. Um, <laughs> if you want a, about a tonic and lime, love. <laughs> Talking to you and your mate, you know, something for the ladies who just walked in. Something sexist, definitely. But you can't, you could never walk in and ask for, I mean, you wouldn't. No. You, you, no, you wouldn't get away with it. No. Um, because pubs were pubs. Pubs were to go in and have and a get few drunk. drinks. Yeah. You were literally to go in and get drunk. Well, you go in after work most nights um, and go home when you reckon your tea might be ready. And sometimes it'll be cold in the oven and your, your missus has gone to bed <laughs> and you're eating <laughs> off, the, off, the, off of the, uh, the kitchen table on your own. Drinking was so much more of a thing I was mean, back in yeah, going back to when I was um, I just left school I did an apprenticeship Jeez, yeah. did an apprenticeship yeah. <laughs> with the um, believe it or not with the with the Ministry of Defence doing mechanical engineering and stuff that doesn't sound and like they it. had an on-site bar wow they had an on-site bar it was like the social club yeah and you would go in and you would do your your morning's work yeah lunchtime you would go into the bar wow down a couple of pints not much then, I've done after that <laughs> Then go back to work, <coughs> operating lathes, My God. grinding machines, no. welding equipment, after... Making missiles. Making missiles. And then it was the Falklands. And it all makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine drink working? Yeah. But no. it's a thing that everybody did. Yeah. Everybody just, did. Having a lunch, I definitely, I mean, my father-in-law, um, who's now passed away, sadly, but he would say say that in their lunch break, they'd go and have a couple of pints mm. and they're working steel workers, going down into <laughs> the furnaces, yeah. you know, have a couple of pints, go back, you know, manage the goods train, go <laughs> loading up all the, 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 the slag, you know, not her, but the, all the stuff in the fire, in the fire, in the yeah. furnaces and go back to it. Yeah carnage but you know men were men then andy in some countries <laughs> in some countries men are still men i know that in spain mm -hmm. when the uh, the guys going out to do the road sweeping and you know drive the lorries they will be sitting and having a little brandy with their uh, with their breakfast in the mornings well it numbs the pain doesn't it? that's obviously something but you know <laughs> you don't you don't hear of major accidents 
Maybe, uh, maybe that's the, th- the trick is to stick to spirits <laughs> with your breakfast rather this is where we go wrong pints with breakfast no but just a shot or two Bob's your uncle yeah I don't think I endorse this <laughs> infomercial from Andy have just a few shots eat through the working day oh dear that's the problem with Ministry of Defence you see that's why there's wars all over the world they're all having a couple they're of shots pissed, at lunchtime yeah. and get a bit punchy <laughs> give me that ashtray Gary <laughs> <laughs> give that over there there you go, Ukraine. Um, but no, you can't you can't be drinking on the job, Andy. I just want to say that for this the sake of this episode. Very um, very um what's the word I'm looking for here? Normal. Very gro- <laughs> grown up with you, James. Thank you. You can't be drinking on the job. Well, I mean I am. I'm keen to yeah, literally. <laughs> Don't go drinking whilst you're working, kids. Um but we're doing this for just for, for, for science. Well we're, yeah, for science. we're just doing it to make it more effective and you know, it's it's a proper lovely eighties nostalgic pub visit. Um but yeah, I mean I think that it was a lot more normal. Um, drinking was a lot more normal and now it's an event. Mm. You very rarely get guys going out after work drinking. You will arrange to go out with friends. Yeah. And there's food involved. Always, um, yeah. always food involved. You know, you don't just turn up and have seven pints. You have seven pints and you have steak and chips. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which ends up with a better result of it. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, like we were saying earlier on that, that at one point there, you know, you would go to a pub. The, the all you would have would be the crisps, maybe the scampi fries, yep. the peanuts, yep. and if you would like to say very very lucky, uh, a pie perhaps, pack a pie, pack a pie, something like that, or, or Betty's hot pot. But now. <laughs> full menu yeah and uh, you know with uh, a lot of places they're open all day do the food all day mm. i get so confused as to which menu is <laughs> is what because i get the smallest writing the smallest writing breakfast is served till 11 this is we were at the village inn me and some of my friends in uh, park gates yep. uh, a couple of weeks back and <laughs> <laughs> four of us sitting on the table mm. and we thought we'd have something to eat and we all had to get our phones out and turn oh, the no. torch on <laughs> we all literally sat around the table so you have to hold it with the torch at an arm's length right, so you need to you need to get it into focus yeah and then you need to have enough light to be able to see and i'll tell you what else we did as well mm. we asked them to turn the music down oh my <laughs> god <laughs> it's game over andy it's game over mate this is why pubs are empty full of old bastards going it's a bit noisy in here isn't it derek yeah it's uh yeah Can you, back, back in the 80s it must have been such a noisy environment and i don't really remember it. obviously i went into pubs as kids and stuff but you know you've got the pinball machine going the fruit machine the arcade machine mm. the music the darts the pool table even maybe loads of men at the bar it was a noisy place yeah and as you say miserable bastards like you <laughs> come into places and go will you mind turning the music down can you stop winning the jackpot on that fruit machine please i'm trying to have a relaxing <laughs> evening with my cappuccino <laughs> like shit it out what's going on the world's coming to an end no wonder pubs are closing but yeah it's uh, this is probably one of the last old pubs in the area i think uh for that very reason and as i say we're in the afternoon now because we've been gassing on for so long what a beautiful pub it is that beautiful it, pub look at this a bastard on. in there yeah <laughs> so two, old, two old farts <laughs> yeah well one and a half <laughs> <laughs> cheers right it is time now mm-hmm. to uh do the mystery sound for okay. real this time okay let's do it here we go it's a mystery I'll tell you what I noticed once watching that. He had a very specific type of woman that would always be... <laughs> naked? It, it would always be a naked, but yeah. it was a particular look okay. that he went for. Wasn't well, it? I mean, 80s look. had a particular sort of yeah. woman, didn't it? They were always sassy and always had a little yeah. something, always tanned, always had a perfect hair. Yeah. Um, and uh, always gorgeous. I mean, much like all the women in our lives, Andy. Obviously, obviously gorgeous, wonderful. And anybody listening, hi. Um, but it's <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, eighties women had very short shorts. Yeah, normally bikini top on. 
Uh, even in winter, big cleavages. Yeah. And yeah. if they weren't sassy and a bit sexy and a little bit of horny, they were angry. That was just <laughs> two types. And the, no producer ever let any other female actress be anybody else. You had to be gorgeous and compliant or hate men totally. <laughs> As Dynasty and Dallas would let us know, they were either on men all the time or wanting to kill them. Weren't allowed normal women in films or TV uh, series at all. That was a very sort of Dynasty and uh, D- Dynasty, mm-hmm. Dynasty and Dallasy kind of music. Music, yeah. But obviously it wasn't. No. But if you know what it is, yeah. you need to let us know. Men and women can answer, <laughs> by the way. I know it sounds like we're sexist, but we allow everybody. Yes. Everybody can have yeah. a go. Um, and that's my slogan. But it's, um, yeah, like EastEnders, for example, you had people like, um, you know, you had Sharon who was um, quite up for all of all sorts. Yes. Wasn't she, bless her? Yes. She was game for uh, everything. And then you had um, Angie. Angie. She was on fire. She would kill you as look at you. She's not having any of it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, and and never never the twain shall meet. Nothing in the middle. It was very restricted, um, especially in a pub scenario, the Queen Vic. Yes. Or, um, you know, you had Bet Lynch. You know, she was having no shit from anybody. And all was Betty, was she? So they weren't taking any crap from men. And then there were women who were all over men. It was very limited writing mm. uh, particularly in pubs mm. but these days there's the full spectrum of ladies as there should be <laughs> james well done for digging us out of that hole then Hi. very very <laughs> well indeed there hey, listen if you know what that is let us know in the comments here there up there down there somewhere behind us yeah. and we'll let you know um uh, if you won next week <laughs> Prize, by the way. Yeah. Tickets to uh, one of James's comedy shows. Not more tickets. More tickets oh, to give away. God. Or this very podcast live before a studio audience. Yes. At the Spring Arts in Haven. What could go wrong? On December the 5th, which I think is a Thursday night. It's a Christmas extravaganza of 80s nostalgia. Oh. Everything that you ever remember and forgotten <laughs> from the 80s Christmases, we're going to be bringing up, aren't we? 100%. 100%. We might even do community making of paper chains. How good How good would that be? <laughs> well, it fills up a, a school lesson, doesn't it? it? That's what it was. <laughs> what are we doing today, miss? I'm making a paper chain for an hour. Ah, oh, for <laughs> Christ's sake. <laughs> See you in January. Yeah, so yeah, we'll do all that. And uh, it, hopefully just really kickstart your festive season. Yeah. Beginning of December, what else is there to do? I think you know, it's, it's fair to say now that the Christmas officially starts just before Halloween, Easter. really. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. As soon as you put the pumpkins away, yeah. there's a Christmas tree in. Absolutely. Um, in I was never in favour of that up until COVID times. Yeah, I always thought to don't even think about putting your Christmas tree up. Oh, thank you. Yep. COVID came along. We were all stuck indoors. Yeah. forever. Yeah, and we just needed something shiny and sparkly. <laughs> so November the first, Christmas trees up. <laughs> well past that point now. Until Valentine's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whack it up. Leave it up. I I remember one of my neighbours yeah. did have a Christmas tree up until February in the corner of their lounge as I walked walk the dog past them in February. Uh, it, it was it was odd, but it was a nice smile. Yeah. I raised a smile, and that was uh, 2021. So yeah, <laughs> still there. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and the house is the the uh, they put the uh, like the icicle fairy lights outside. Yeah, leave them there. They yeah. always go, and then they're still there six months later. Well, six months. Six months later. Oh, I've got some of the decorations <laughs> in my estate are still up from COVID, <laughs> <laughs> and every now and again. Like a pss, 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 yeah. and try and light them at Christmas but um, yeah yeah, we've put our Christmas lights up around our house and ready to go um, and uh, yeah we are we are on fire well they are on fire they're awful they're not <laughs> well, wild something's <laughs> happened um, but yeah insurance purposes I mustn't mention that but um, I've got um, I've got another ashtray to show you um, oh, well, this some, is heavy it's got some heft to it, well this is Hofmeister follow the bear yes. do you remember that yes and if you wanted to be a, a football lout it sort of gave you sort of That's- proper Gonna do some that's gonna hurt some damage, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna take some fag butts, isn't it? That, yeah. Um, so the Hofmeister was almost like uh, it was almost allowing you to be a bit of a yob. (laughs) He was a geezer, wasn't he? Yes, the 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 Hofmeister bear walking through the pub. He had a bomber jacket on, he had a hat on. He was like the madness sort of um image, wasn't it? And all the lads would sort of follow in legs akimbo Mm. around each other, ready to kick off at any moment. Um, a lad 
lad sort of uh, icon, really. Speaking of kicking off, obviously in those days, mm -hmm. there would never be a doorman on the door no. to a pub. No, I good don't luck. Know, yeah. I don't know when that became a thing, Yeah, but uh, there was a lot of flying ashtrays, yeah. a lot of glassing. I think it's when lagers came in, you see. Do you think? Well, they started bringing in lagers. They were like, the young, about. Folks, young folks started coming in. These kids coming in, all kicking off. Come Let's better get a bloke on the door. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of blokes on the door. Which one of you, mate? Just trying to have a friendly banter. Bit of a punchy. Um, bit of a fight. <laughs> we can't even have a fight these days without someone trying to stop us. Yeah, it's a new world, the 90s, on it? But, um, Definitely. And I've got another last one, uh, last ashtray to show you, and that's obviously the skull. A little bit more delicate, obviously a bit more refined. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, to match with our um, beer mats. And uh, skull were great with the branding. Um, very good with branding. Skull, 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 skull. As if by magic. Do you remember that? As if by magic, James. At this particular seat of learning, there are all kinds of scholars. Scholars of aerodynamics. 57. Scholars of 57. mathematics. 87. Scholars of music. There are even scholars of diplomacy. Pint of skull, please. Make that two pints. <laughs> But there's one subject all scholars enjoy studying. You're a gentleman and a scholar. When you know lager, you're a scholar. That's me. Famous line. Look Hello. at Hello. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the school, the pubs, it always seemed to be that it was lads having a great time in a pub one woman somewhere not behind the bar there's one woman somewhere because she was a bit fiery she liked the pub <laughs> even though there's a hundred men in there and a bloke behind the bar like i say a fat landlord in a cardigan um tea towel over his shoulder and seven busty barmaids and that was your favorite pub really yeah. um but you could barely actually see through to, to, to order any drinks um but yeah i i sort of miss the atmosphere of a pub where it was smoky and a little bit crusty and a little bit tired. You're saying that, like in the in the nightclubs and things, they've brought in um, dry ice. Yeah. Why don't they bring dry ice into pubs? James? I know. I know. They're it's lucky to get thing. any ice in a pub, to be honest, because it's all melted everywhere, and you just want ice in your drink to keep it cold. But yeah, when we get our double decker mobile pub going round picking people up, James patented, by the way, yeah. it's upstairs. It's going to have dry ice. Dry ice. It'll yeah. look like it's on bloody yeah. fire. Yeah. But it, yeah, driving around Hampshire, <laughs> just like buses on fire. No, it's Andy James's cool double decker pub. <laughs> yeah, that'll be us, mate. And now uh, the window, like skull, 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 skull. And all the kids are like, who's those old bars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to that. That'll I can't wait podcast. for that. It's going to be great. And we'll do um, all the uh, pub food in that. It's all going to be lunchbox snacks. <laughs> lunchbox snacks. <laughs> Which means it's very nice. Another one. Nice yeah. on too. James's special lunchbox surprise. Now, I know a lot of people have been watching this going, well, I didn't even like Scampi Fries, actually, James. Um, so um, you've really let me down and I don't feel affiliated with this episode. Well, I've got the others, um, so don't you worry. Um, here we go. Um, there's, there's yours. There's yours. Um, bacon Fries. Bacon Fries. These were, I think these were possibly the more popular of the two, I think, because you can still find these in a pub. Um, you can still find Scampi Fries, but I think that the Bacon Fries, Smith's Crisp still, by the way, uh, not actually, obviously, owned by Swiss. They're owned by Walkers. They're owned by one of the five... Walkers. One oh, of the Pepsi. five ma major corporations. Yeah, PepsiCo own Walkers, yeah, don't they, yeah. I believe? But these, these, I uh, know, mm, are just the same. They're bloody lovely, aren't they? These could sober up the most pissed guy. What I like is they still put the colouring in them as well. Oh, yeah. They actually make them look like Looks bacon. Looks like bacon. Yeah. These are like frazzles on acid. Mm. Because frazzles don't taste the same anymore. But these taste the same. These are exactly the same. These are oh. almost, almost like crackling. Yeah. You have three pints. You have one of these, you can drive. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. But, you know, you feel like you've sobered up. Yeah. With these, because they're so... This is a carb fest. This is like... This is like... These are like... You know those car sponges? The big yellow ones. <laughs> yes. If you squash them right down to a tiny one the size of this, that's what that is. And it gets into your tummy and it goes whoop. Soaks up all the alcohol. All the booze is gone. Fantastic. Yeah. Tastes the same. Perfect. Yeah. Lovely. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely yeah. perfect. Because the other food we were saying about, you know, the lack of the um lack of the the food in the pubs. Of course there was I think it was in the eighties they just began to come along you would go out of the pub when you'd had you know, closing when the bell had rung 
and closing time was 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 done. Mm. But if you were really lucky, mm. you would have an Indian mm. within walking distance where you could go in and be belligerent yeah. as a customer. The only restaurants where you're allowed to be and it's expected of you to be rude to the staff <laughs> Indian restaurants and Chinese restaurants you wouldn't go and do that in an English restaurant no but you come out of the in. pub you've come out of the pub you go into the Chinese you put the Chinese accent on obviously you go <laughs> I'm sorry, that's what people did. <laughs> Just put what your fingers on gas Yeah, on. it's what people did. Mm. And same with the you know, Chinese, same with the same with the Indian. There'd be there would be some good natured racism. Yeah, every and the time. waiters were absolutely not spitting in our food. Um, <laughs> <it> was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean they were so I mean it happened, you hear it every now and again, even these days, like the odd racist in an Indian or a Chinese restaurant. But you, they are. So, I mean, the waiters have got the patience uh, and the calmness of saints to put up with that. Certainly in the eighties, you're right. My God, the stuff they had to put up with. Just and it was just normal. You know, you look back now, much like looking back at an episode of Bloody Jim will fix it or something, and you just <laughs> you go back and watch those. You just, <laughs> I tell it's you, a regular thing of yours, is it? <laughs> I don't know what I fancy. But Jim will fix it. I don't know what the. I don't know what the. Uh, well, the YouTube algorithm is serving me up. But I, there was a, there was a clip that I found, and it was um, it was Jimmy Savile wow. and Rolf Harris. Oh my God! Together, followed by it's a knockout. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! But uh, yeah, it was it was like you get back to the point though. It was expected and accepted. Mm. Sadly, casual racism. Yeah after a night at the pub well yeah and i mean I, I mean you in london chinese and indian restaurants were prolific unusual down south i'll be honest with you you know you wouldn't there's unusual it's certainly in the 80s 90s maybe 80s not many indian restaurants or indian takeaways and chinese okay. takeaways, chinese pubs, chinese um uh, restaurants but um yeah it, and I, th I guess that's why I remember my dad being so pissed all the time because he's coming out of pubs <laughs> and he can't eat. He's just coming home <laughs> shit faced. He yeah. can't soak up any of that booze at all. He's wandering home, swinging off a lamppost. He can't even find a Chinese restaurant anywhere to sober himself up. It was, I, um, you know, back in the back in the days when I was beginning to be a young drinker. Mm. You know, fifties. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was a rite of passage to yeah. go to the pub. Yeah, drink as many pints as you could try and keep up with the you know the big men yeah and then just i uh, just come come home absolutely shit faced well i tell you what he didn't have in the 80s and pubs bloody kids no no it, no well, kids. nobody brought up if he walked in with a kid it, it was against the law for the kid to be in the pub i think wasn't it i just think within the radius of the bar the music would stop if you walked like, in with a kid Who's this, mate? <laughs> You've just stolen him. <laughs> Pedophiles in the pub. He's walked in with a kid. What's he got? Why is he here? It wouldn't even make sense. There was the only thing you do with a, if you go into the pub and you have a kid is you leave the kid in the car outside. Ideally, window cracked. Yeah, packet of crisps. Yeah, maybe a bottle of pop, two bendy straws. Mm. Enjoy yourself, kids. We'll be back in an hour. And there were two. I just remember there's two parts of the pub, weren't there? There was a saloon. And the, and, public. The, and the and the lounge or something there's the public bar and the saloon mm. the, yeah and you if you were where there with your missus you didn't go into the saloon did you but well, one, one you didn't it go was, i think the public bar was definitely men only yeah and i think the saloon was, was a, a little, little bit, bit more, more salubrious a bit more luxurious yeah so you might you get could, a baby sham you might have a baby sham in there was it yeah hard wooden floors in the public bar yeah no carpet none of that none of that business i know because it it's easier to clean up the blood <laughs> it, if you wipe clean floors in the, yeah i remember and this again in the country some very far-flung country pubs you'll go in and there are two sides to it mm. and often if i've done a gig or whatever and i go to a pub beforehand and i'll walk in i'll think whoa, whoa this is not the side i should be in <laughs> it's just men who go this is bloke you still do get that thing i love the fact that you do still get that thing in country pubs now where you go in and sometimes all the conversation stops yeah and there's and they look at you. people looking at you yeah yeah, yeah. If you don't, this is and that's why pub. pubs are closing yeah. <laughs> now i've not got this pubs like, not pubs like this one though james not pubs like this it's wonderful it's lovely now obviously when you're delivering your drinks to your table if you're not smoking maybe you should be because this is relentless a jps <laughs> john player special tray 
if you're not drinking and smoking, something wrong with you. That's good, actually. That would actually make a, a very good extra large ashtray as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough smokers around at that point that they would be drink, uh, smoking and drinking. I mean, it, uh, uh, what do you reckon? Half the people smoked back then? Oh, easy. Yeah. Probably more than half, James. Yeah. It's more a bit like half. dog owners. It was like, you used to have like 10 or 20% of the people had a dog. And now it's flipped. It's like 80 or 90 percent. If you don't have a dog, people think you're weird. Um, <laughs> it's certainly in my street. It's one one house out of 17, and they don't have a dog. You wait. I wake up. It would be nice to wake up to a cockerel. I don't. I wake up to a cockapoo. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> everybody's got a dog, uh, and it's like shit. Me, it's daylight. They're having a shit and going for a bark. Now it's the same with fags. You just you. Everybody was smoking back then, mm. and now um, nobody. There's hardly anybody. So very few people smoke. Yeah. It was very w weird going to other European countries where um, I was. I was in it Italy, and smoking is still a yeah. thing. Yeah, in in Italy and in France as well. Yeah, people, you know, they're not on the cherry vapes <laughs> just yet. <laughs> nice clouds of candy floss <laughs> drifting across you. Yeah. It's funny. You go to certain towns and cities, and they do still smoke a lot in this country. It's strange. Down south, not so much. Um, you go into London, outside the pubs, there's still a few smokers having. Uh, up north they're all smoking bless them got nothing else to do um but uh, hi yorkshire thanks for listening um but <laughs> no, no, i mean you know but it's weird that it is quite sort of uh pockets, pockets, yeah, of, yeah. pockets of the country where they do smoke and don't smoke but in, in pubs nowhere is allowed to smoke everybody everybody smokes i still remember being able to smoke on buses i still but only upstairs for mm. some reason still remember being able to smoke on the trains only in certain carriages wow yeah and in london i still remember being able to smoke on the underground not just in the stations but on the underground really where there's no ventilation <laughs> at all Choo -choo. can you imagine and it's just steam trains on the underground this is back in your childhood i think we're talking about hey, you can, just, everybody smoked everywhere yeah. everywhere wow. Yeah, yeah, and I, and now it's as you say, they're either vaping or they're just on the old Xbox, and that's the education. Yeah, that's what they're getting. And good luck to them. You know, they're not getting any fresh air <laughs> still, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as they were in the eighties. They won't get any fresh air, um, just smoking. But um, yeah, but they're not filling pubs up either. No. So all uh, this, if there's nothing from this podcast you get other than that, kids, come to pubs. Final clip. <laughs> That, I mean, that is really a different world, isn't it? That's, that must was, be late 80s. Somebody was off their tits. There were. Ecstasy <laughs> was a massive that. part of that advert, I think. <laughs> was that just the point of ecstasy? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, that was very Sledgehammer, Pet Shop Boys yeah. sort of feel to it, wasn't it? At well, any point. They, I don't I still looking at that. What were they trying to achieve? What were they trying to say? Well, I'm not going to drink a pint off the back of that advert. No. I'm not, I'm not in some sort of synchronised swimming team. What? <laughs> Is that what you have? <laughs> when the vending machine should come out of the pool. Come on, let's have a Tuborg. <laughs> Play a bit of Space Invaders and down yourself a pint. Is Tuborg still a thing? I think it probably it is. Tuborg. I think it is. Do you mean choo 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 choo? choo, 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 choo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it's just just strange. But that's that must be late eighties. That yeah. because that is very cocaine funky. Fueled. Cocaine, yeah. fueled. cocaine is very yeah. yuppie. Yeah, everything's going on that's sexy there. There's ladies in the advert. I mean, it's chaos. <laughs> 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 Can't be right. Very modern. It were at the time. I'm sure the it was females. absolutely groundbreaking. Maybe yeah. they were trying to confuse us into into buying, but he's a tube boards. Tube board is not a, a particularly yeah. popular drink of well, of choice get, at the moment. The only lady it? I remember in an advert before seeing that one is the um uh the what is it the the Worthy water in Mallorca okay, yeah. don't taste like what it oh, uh, Carling yeah. back was it Carling or Carlsberg one Carlsberg one reaches them, yeah. parts other beers yeah. cannot reach and that's the lady that's the only lady I remember seeing before that bikini clad diving into a swimming pool and there was the one with John Smith's as well wasn't there with the um, the Tash. lady had the moustache yes. oh was it Tash, I think so yeah. Yeah. okay well, that's probably yeah. I think so yeah. yeah I mean other than that just men, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For lager and beers. I think this is maybe this is what happened. Well, you know, men, you know, they thought we need to sell more beer. Yeah. Every single man 
in the country is drinking beer. Yeah. So then they had to start selling to ladies. Yeah. And then when you know ladies had, had started drinking that's when they started sending to kids with the with the alka pops <laughs> so yeah that's a what will run be, out of clients these babies next then <laughs> <laughs> literally on the tit <laughs> yeah. just say, there we go booze coming through yeah it's I, like with, with with food though like all the you know i know i bang on about junk food and things but they're now doing snacks for for pets aren't they, are they? like they do little like you know a treat for your cat or a treat for your dog right you know which is exactly what they've what they made us do James. Yeah, they filled us they up. Filled us up. So now they've still, got, and dogs. they've still got to do fat cats and dogs. God, yeah, I've got a fat bitch at home. <laughs> She's absolutely useless. She's a rescue dog. Not my what? What are you? <laughs> She's useless, <laughs> and she is overweight. And I mean, she keeps opening the bag of crisps. I keep coming in, going, "Don't eat that junk." You know, it's all the owner's <laughs> fault. That's the problem. We keep feeding our pets rubbish, and uh, and apparently it's uh, it's my fault. But um, yeah, well, yeah, you've got to find the market somewhere. You see, this is the problem. Pubs aren't uh, as popular as they used to be, so they've got to start f broadening their market yeah. and start getting the kids involved in the booze. My two boys don't drink. What about your kids? Ah, oh, sadly, they, <laughs> sadly they, they drink. Do, yeah. They drink a lot. Yeah, they do. Oh dear, my boys. I think they've learned their lesson by watching their father. Um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing. Though. Cheers, kids. A lot of kids don't. A lot of kids don't don't drink at all now a lot of kids kids certainly don't watch telly I've kids kids don't do any of the things we used to do <laughs> kids don't watch telly kids don't listen to the radio and drink kids don't drink or smoke or smoke well, oh. they don't do anything they don't talk to us anymore <laughs> <laughs> my kids don't talk don't look eye contact they don't like that <laughs> don't look at a kid in the eye you predator what's wrong with it it's my fucking sons <laughs> I'm, I'm allowed to look at them dad stop being weird it's just eye contact son leave it you're gonna come down for dinner soon not again <laughs> yeah yeah so it's the life we lead and oh, life dear. we lead on that happy note james yeah i think we're at the end of episode six so what's next after this what are we going up to now oh, it's going to be what is it today it's tuesday the 19th of november today so yeah. not long till our big live show yeah at uh, spring arts in heaven we're certainly having a run to christmas now aren't we we are and then it's feel christmas, it? all christmas all the way really christmas christmas new year new year it's all exciting cozy comfy happy vibes yes which is what this podcast is all about <laughs> hi until next time <laughs> We'll see you next Tuesday. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's edition. We'd love it if you could subscribe in your favourite podcast app. And don't forget, there's a video version on YouTube too. You can contact us using the links in the show notes and on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time for another edition of Bring Back the 80s. <laughs>